Ann Arbor Inclusive is produced in part with the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues and CTN. The views and opinions expressed in the show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the Commission or CTN. For more information about the Commission on Disability Issues, visit a2gov.org slash disability resources. If you have program topic suggestions, please email a2disabilityissues at gmail.com. Hello. Welcome to Ann Arbor Inclusive, a program with the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. I'm Tom Holtland, your host. Today I'm really excited that we'll be talking about artists with disabilities uh, with Michelle Acevedo. And uh, before we get into who they are and the special program that they have, let's take a look at uh, a video up front. Good morning, this is I in Detroit on CBS 62 and I'm Jackie Page. Studio West Gallery in Brighton opened in 2011. Their mission is to showcase artists with disabilities. Painting, drawing, ceramics, and fiber arts are just a few of the mediums that are displayed. But more importantly, Artisan Corner shines the light on some very special artists. The mission of work skills is to optimize potential. Art is very therapeutic for our participants. It allows them creative expression, as well as the opportunity to earn income. When I look into the eyes of our participants, I see joy, I see that they have a purpose. The common language is art, and everybody speaks that language. When they are allowed to tell their story, they create some incredible pieces of work. When they see someone take interest in that work, there's a great deal of pride. You can see the joy on their faces. Also, uh, they get a paycheck, which is a plus. If you could measure them from the point that they come in to the point that they are creating these beautiful pieces of work, it's truly night and day. Well, part of the way that helps me to become more independent. Everybody can do something and the folks who come to us have an individualized plan and we look at what do you like to do? What are you good at doing rather than what can't you do or what have you been unsuccessful at? Our mission always stated for the gallery is a home with art with a heart. There's nothing like this in the community here. I feel like the artisans and all the participants we serve, we're changing lives every day. It's so incredible what we're doing here and the lives that we're changing. Wow, that looks like a really, really fun job, Michelle. Uh, I'd like to introduce Michelle Acevedo, who is the Creative Arts Director with the Artisan Corner. So Michelle, welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm glad uh, to be Michelle, here. Michelle, to start out with, in your own words, what is Artisan Corner? Uh, Artisan Corner, is a work skills art program that was developed as a way to diversify entrepreneurial op opportunities for artists with disabilities. Uh, the program promotes full inclusion for artists and uh, emerging, emerging artists and established artists in the community and for it, it helps folks uh, with barriers and disabilities uh, develop their own uh, authentic style as an artist and become professionals in their own right to help them to earn an income. Okay. And it is a program of work skills, correct? Yes. Can you tell us about work skills? You know, I, I know it was founded some time ago. Can you give us a little background there? Sure. Uh, work skills corporation was developed in 1973. Their CEO, Ron Jones, uh, uh, had a friend who had an adult child uh, with uh, disabilities and one of the concerns that his friend had was uh, how this young man was going to live independently in the community, how he was going to uh, be employed. Uh, the young man wanted a job but it was very hard for this young man to find a job in the community um, and so uh, they got together and Rod decided that he was going to open a work center for folks with disabilities and barriers to employment. And uh, like I said, that was in 1973. 
And they started with uh, contracts for small parts assembly for GM. And uh, GM was sending parts over that folks could assemble and whether they could build uh, eight parts in a day or 800 parts in a day, they got paid for a piece rate. So they were able to be gainfully employed and earn a paycheck. That's great. And uh, when did sort of the, when and how did sort of the arts program start? So that's a great question. The arts program started, um, Rod Jones had noticed um, with his team that was running work skills that on breaks and things like that, that folks would be doodling and there would be uh, folks that were doing art at home and things like that. And he has always loved the arts. So he, he asked those folks to show them uh, their art and things like that and said, you know what, this might be a great thing. Um, in 2011, uh, he opened an art gallery called Studio West Gallery so that uh, folks that were making art at home and independent artists that also were occasionally employed here um, could sell their art there. And they started to do a recreational program here uh, through an art instructor uh, who would come in and volunteer uh, to teach these folks and develop some skills and they would take their crafts and their art and they would sell them at the gallery. Um, and that started in 2011 with Studio West. Um, Artisan Corner started in 2015 uh, when they reached out to me as an independent artist and asked if I would want to be a creative arts director on their team and help develop and grow an art program here. How did they find you? So it's a it's a very interesting story how they found me. Uh, I was um, I was a stay-at-home mom and I was a work-at-home mom and I had an art studio in my home. And uh, when the market crashed in 2010, uh, a lot of people were suffering. I was selling a lot of my art online uh, in an Etsy shop and, uh, and the market completely dropped out from my work between 2010 and 2015. Uh, my income had been cut into half and then half again. Uh, so I was struggling and we had some friends um, that owned a restaurant that were struggling as well and they were struggling to keep employees. And so they, my background is restaurant, food and hospitality and business marketing. And then I minored in art and I was a professional artist um, from right out of high school. Um, but I was, uh, talking with one of my friends, my husband and I had gone to a restaurant um, that we would go for every recital, every good report card as a celebration. We would go and have a meal at a restaurant. And after years, you develop relationships with the owners and the management team, the chefs in the back and things like that. And so uh, we would we would sit down with the owner and he would talk about uh, how he's having problems hiring staff and things like that. And he said, if only I could get you to come and work here for me. So uh, I called him up and I said, hey, I could come in hostess for you guys on the weekends if you want. And on a particular Friday in February, uh, I was in 2015, um, I was taking my kids out to the bus stop and my daughter looked at me and she said, mom, if you could be anything in the world as a job, what would you want to be? And I said, well, I love what I do. You know, I have an art studio at home. I get to stay home with you guys. And uh, and I love what I do. But she said, no, but if you could be, if you were little like me and you could be anything you want, what would you want to be? And I said, I guess I kind of always wanted to be an art teacher when I was little like you. And she got on the bus and really didn't think about it. And then uh, when the kids got home from school, I went to work hostessing and helping out my friend at the restaurant. And uh, I was talking to some folks throughout the day and I love people. And uh, so I was talking to some folks throughout the day and we had a couple come in and they were in corporate attire, right? So and it's nine o'clock on a Friday night and they're in corporate attire. So I, I looked at them and I said, long work day, huh? And they said, yes. And I, so I sat them with this wonderful uh, waitress and uh, she's a lifer. You know, the waitresses that were meant to waitress because they love people, they love food, and they love the hospitality industry. She was that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. So I sat them with the perfect waitress at the perfect table, and uh, I, was, I was talking to them, and I recognized that, I recognized the, the woman in the couple. And I said, uh, I said, I think I know your daughter from school, 
And I said her name and she said, yes, that's my daughter. And I said, well, please tell her um, that Miss Michelle said hi because I would volunteer at the school and I would read great big books to the kindergarten class. And, and she said, come over here, come sit with us. And I said, well, you guys need to order. And she pushed down the menus and she said, we don't want to make another decision today. And, and she said, um, why don't you just get with the waitress and you can order whatever you want for us. So that day we happened to have a lobster and filet on sale for $14.99 that came with the salad, the dessert, everything. So I just ordered dinner for them. They had a lovely meal. And when they were finished their meal, I stopped back to say um, goodbye because I was leaving for the evening. And she said, what do you really do? And I said, well, I have an art studio in my home. I've been a professional artist since I was 17 and I had a, a very thriving business and I was very blessed to be able to stay at home uh, for the last decade um, with my children and be raising my kids. And, uh, and she said she has an art studio in her home and she kicked her husband. I didn't know he was her husband, but she kicked him and she slapped the table. And she said, come sit with me. And I said, okay. And she said, do you have a website? And I said, yes. And she, she looked at my website and she slapped the table again. And she said, she has an art studio in her home. And I didn't get it why they were laughing at the time. And she said, how would you like to be the creative arts director in a very special place? And I said, that sounds wonderful. And she said, I'm going to call you. We traded contact information. And uh, we'll bring you in for an interview. We want you to meet some people. And wow. I said, okay. And then she called me from the parking lot and said, your interview's on Monday. Please be in Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, so I went for an interview that Monday. And I met this population of people that were lovely. And, uh, and I decided that, uh, that this was probably my purpose in life. This is where I wanted to be. Well, that's a good so, segue into the people that you met, the, the, uh, the folks that were doing art and that were working um, at work skills. Can you tell us about, are there requirements for your participants? Who are the, who, who are your customers or uh, who are the participants in your program? Sure, um, the folks who we serve are folks who love art. They love to do things with their hands. They're very creative people. Um, whether they love to take pictures and they love photography or they like to paint, do ceramics, do jewelry making, um, and no matter where they are um, in their artistic and creative journey, I sort of look for uh, their individual ability levels and what kind of things inspire them, and then we start from there and work from there. Uh, we have some folks who love to draw. And so we started with drawing an illustration and then we can do things like, we have a young lady and this is her little book collection right here. And she writes these lovely, funny stories. And uh, it's funny, her wow. name is Anna, but her author name is Animation. And she writes on the back of her little book collections and she does hand illustrated books. That's wow. what she does. She loves to draw and things like that. Whether you like to draw or you like ceramics, uh, we have uh, folks that love to make jewelry. So they're self-professed beadaholics. So I love to feed that. And we have, uh, we have a lot of jewelry makers that they sit and they socialize and they make jewelry and that's what they do. Um, so they don't necessarily have, have to be an already established artist. They can be anyone that, uh, that wants to try art. Yes, if you, if you have a love of art and you wanna to try to be creative, we can work with um, wherever your abilities lie and your individual tastes um, and your inspirations are and when try to develop skills to where you can be creative and you get to socialize with other people that are like-minded they're very creative minded too and uh, we can develop those skills so that you can learn how to be a professional artist using abilities that you already have that just need a little help developing okay um Let's talk about where you guys are located and uh, and then we'll sort of go into tours and how you're handling that now given the pandemic. Okay. Uh, we are located right in the heart of Brighton. Uh, right now we have uh, the WorkSkills uh, main office is located on Rickett Road in Brighton and we also have our Studio West Gallery which is downtown. Uh, 
We are right off Main Street on West Street okay. and uh, Studio West Gallery. Uh, we have a beautiful gallery where we're going to be doing uh, interactive sessions with our artists and the community is welcome to come in uh, when we're not in quarantine and welcome to come in and meet the artists and see them while they're working. It's pretty amazing. And we also have, uh, we have tours. Um, we have a, a, a tour for Studio West Artisan Corner and for WorkSkills main office so that you can do a meet and greet and see all the wonderful things that we do here. And uh, those tours that are scheduled uh, when we're not in quarantine are catered by Panera. And so it's called the breakfast tour. So they usually start about 8.30 in the morning. We have a lovely person who is our, uh, our director and development manager of WorkSkills Foundation. Her name is Julie. And if you'd like to schedule a tour, you can reach her at a phone number that is a direct line to her. And that's 810-534-6152. And she's like our, our Love Boat cruise director, if you're old enough to remember Love Boat. And how are you doing? Uh, you said something about virtual tours. So we are actually we are doing uh, our Zoom virtual classes right now, as well as virtual tours. So what we've been working so hard on uh, since we've been back during the quarantine, we don't have artists in the building as of yet uh, because we're 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 trying to uh, stay within safe health guidelines for the quarantine for the COVID crisis that that we're in right now. So what we've done is we have put together, uh, Lauren from the studio and myself, we put together these, these artist kits, right? That no matter where you're at in your, in your artistic journey, we have things that folks were delivering these to folks, to, to their homes and uh, to our artists who are, who are, are at home right now and uh, they're looking for some creative release but they may not have supplies. We're actually doing Zoom classes online. Yeah, yeah. And tutorial that way they get to, one of the biggest parts of being in, in, in an art class and in an art center is the social interaction between people that right. are very creative minded. Um, so, uh, so we're working on these Zoom classes um, and we have, a, we have Zoom classes every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, oh, good. So that the artists can interact with each other and they can learn something new just so they, like one of the things that we were doing is we were learning how to draw cupcakes. Nice, yeah. <laughs> with we have a lot of kids that like to draw, uh, learning how to draw flowers and then paint them or color them, things like that. So we're doing virtual online lessons and uh, that way we get to hang out and say hello to our friends. Our virtual tours, uh, what we can do is you can call the same number for Julie um, she's our development director and she can take you on our virtual tour of Studio West, Artisan Corner. You can uh, meet some nice folks that work here in the staff until the artists come back. I believe the quarantine is supposed to be lifted on June 16th um, as of now. So we're planning okay. on having folks back in, uh, back in the building and having our artists back um, by the end of June. So I, um you know, you mentioned about artists, uh, you know, having to be home and I'm sure that creates, uh, you know, isolation issues. Uh, I read that um, one of your artists said that art is her life and she'd be lost without it. And so um, that's great that you have those kits and that you're basically putting your program out to your participants, even if you can't be face to face. Um, so I think it, it'd be a good time to, uh, take a look at a video of, uh, one of your, um, one of your great success stories and artists named Garrett. So let's go ahead and watch that. And then, uh, you can expound on it and tell us a little bit more. Hello everyone. My name is uh, Garrett Alexander Jones. I'm a participant to here at Work Skills, uh, Arts and Corner. And uh, the person I want to, to be in the world in the future is uh, being a, a full-time uh, professional artist. 
and me got my head on my own and the micro to manage into the business. I made my own work that, 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 that was inspired on him, but make it a different type of versions. Seeing a different type of designs uh, of his uh, starry nights, along, the, along doing uh, the snowy nights. One of my biggest one I ever painted uh, was actually uh, the Arts of Light cabinet. Took me almost like uh, four months uh, to complete, but I got some help uh, with some of my, some of my classmates. They always uh, give me a more motivated, becoming more the conf confident, more to, to be the better on my own self, like I am today. If everyone is really interested in my artworks, just go on to my uh, on Facebook account, uh, Garrett uh, Jones uh, Artist, or the artist in the corner of the, of the Facebook account. Then you can see the my own. Uh, Pants and laser creations, so you can order them up so I can uh, start to working on them. That was great. Garrett seems like a really, really cool guy and definitely a talented artist. Tell us a little bit more about Garrett. Uh, Garrett came to us in uh, 20, summer of 2015, and uh, he, he walked in the door uh, with his mom, and he had 16 notebooks full of My Little Pony drawings. And he said, I wanted to meet you because I want to be a professional artist someday. And that is he was the first one to walk in and just walk up to me and say, I want to be a professional artist. And, uh, and it, was, it was a pretty amazing moment. I said, okay, let's take a look at your work and see what you're doing. Uh, he had, um, he's a Star Trek fan. He's a brony, which is a My Little Pony fan, if you didn't know. And, uh, and so he had lots and lots of drawings from Star Trek and, uh, and the My Little Pony drawings. And I said, okay, we're gonna wanna get to painting then. We sat down with a box of inspirational pictures and uh, I have about 300 pictures in there of artists from Van Gogh and some of the older classic artists to, to modern and contemporary art. And he went through every picture in the box and he pulled out six pictures that inspired him that he really liked. All six pictures were artworks by Van Gogh. And I said, okay. So this is the style that speaks to you. So yeah. let's work on that. So uh, over the first month that he was in our art program, he was drawing Starry Night. It was his absolute favorite uh, piece of art by Van Gogh. And uh, then we worked on him uh, starting to paint and to paint Starry Night. After he sold his first canvas, he was so excited to actually get a paycheck that he wanted to go bigger. So he painted a second canvas with something called Snowy Night. It was very snowy in Michigan and he decided to change it up and put his own authentic spin on things. Yeah. Uh, he has done some in very bright and different colors. Uh, he took the inspiration and he ran with it and did his own authentic thing with different paintings of sunflowers and Starry Night and a lot of inspirations from Van Gogh. And now he has completely found uh, his own authentic self and how he wants to express himself as an artist, which is pretty amazing. And I bet you've seen him change from the, from the first day you met him to today. And uh, I, I think that's, that's awesome. So yeah. before, we, uh, before we finish up, I, I noticed uh, definitely during this interview, but also in the, um, in the conversation I had with you leading up to it, to, to the show, to get to know you, you, I can tell you really love your job. And uh, can you tell us if that's true and why? So, you know, it's something the the development manager for our foundation and I, we, we have like a, 
we have like a little disagreement. She says she has the best job and I say that I have the best job at work skills. I think it's an amazing thing when you find your purpose in life and something that you have been in training your whole life to do and you just don't realize it. Uh, never, never working with the population that I work with now, um, I feel like I missed out um, uh, kind of finding this sooner. It's, it's, I get to help folks develop skills uh, and develop their abilities and focus on the things that they can do rather than the things that, that they're unable to do or they can't do. Um, right. I get to help aspiring uh, artists develop their, their individual authentic selves and who they are as a creative being and find that um, when you look at our social media and our Facebook and Instagram pages that have all of their beautiful pictures holding up their artwork, how proud they are, I feel like I am the luckiest person in the world to have the job that I do. I can't wait to wake up and come to work every day. And I know that there's a, not a lot of people that can say that. So I feel very blessed to have found that right. kind of work. Yep. My dad always said, figure out what you love and, and figure out how to share that with folks. So uh, we only have a minute left. I, I want to make sure that people know what they can do to support uh, the Artisan Corner. Can they purchase uh, art by these folks? So yes, we have our Studio West uh, physical brick and mortar building is on West Street, uh, just off Main Street in Brighton. And we also have our new uh, web website we have our web shop it's etsy and if you go to etsy.com uh, and you shop this ability studio uh, you can you can shop in our online shop we have uh, we have all kinds of sublimated items we have taken uh, folks art and they have their own merch so you can see that we have uh, sublimated items here we have things like mugs latte mugs travel mugs we have car coasters wow um, this this beautiful ceramic vase yeah. was, was, was made here. So this is a beautiful stoneware vase. We have things like that. If it's not in our online shop, it's probably because we are selling out in the first four weeks that we've been open, we had 92 sales. So wow. folks love the convenience of being able to shop online and have a gift shipped anywhere. Michelle, I'm so glad that we met you. I, I had no idea about this. I live so close to Brighton and I can't wait to come in for a tour. Um, we, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I want to thank you so much for joining Ann Arbor Inclusive and highlighting this very special program. Um, and uh, with that, we'll say goodbye. Uh, and to our viewers, thank you so much for watching today, Ann Arbor Inclusive. I'm Tom Holtland with the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. We'll see you next time. Uh, thank you so much for having me.